Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Severiano Pauli and we're gonna talk about the double bass. Today we're gonna talk about one of the issues that touches all of us in the bass world, which is um, what is the most correct way to uh, hold the bass or reformulate it. How do I play the bass without getting hurt? We all know that the double bass is a very beautiful and uh, lovely instrument but it's also very large and physically demanding. So it's very important that we develop a way of holding it and a way of playing that doesn't bring any damage to our health. Let's take a look at it. The very first thing to think about when we decide to approach the, this elephant on the ground is that we have a um, proper, correct and healthy posture. If our posture is uh, good in the first place, it's going to be much easier later to approach the instrument and that's anyway going to be much better for our life in general, much healthier. So, which are the principles behind this? Let's take a look. The first principle, really really important when approaching this elephant here, and really important anyway for, uh, for uh, your own health, is that of having a good, healthy and correct posture. By having it, uh, not only you will play better and feel better when you play, but you will avoid a lot of problems in, uh, in your back, in your spine, um, in your legs and other parts of the body. As someone who has gone through uh, quite a lot of back pain in his life, I can really, I can warmly suggest you to really take care of this. So, what, what do I do in order to achieve this? In the first place, um, I make sure that I'm grounded so that and that the weight of my body gets transmitted from my body into the ground. Why is this important? Because if the weight uh, doesn't go into the ground, is not uh, discharged, unloaded into the ground, it will just stop somewhere else in the body. The weight doesn't uh, vanish, of course. So it will get stopped here in the back that happen very often in the knees or other parts and that will lead to uh, pain, to tensions and to even more severe consequences. So that's uh, something to really be aware of. So how do I make sure that my weight doesn't stay on my body but just goes into the ground? In, so I put my legs in a way um, in a way that allows the weight to be distributed evenly between them and flow onto the ground. So if you see, I have my legs like this with my knees parallel to my hips. In, uh, in this manner, the, I have the weight evenly distributed, 50% on the left leg, 50% on the right leg, and go just wee straight into the ground. I feel very well like this, I feel firm, grounded, yet I'm very relaxed. A good image, <laughs> it was a bit funny, to, uh, which is, which is uh, at least has been for me a good way of visualizing and, um, and of training myself to have this sensation, is uh, uh, thinking about, you know, those uh, balloons, uh, those kind of puppets that uh, you see in American movies, like uh, at, um, at car retailers, you know, that they are inflated from under and they move like this. Well, that's, uh, that's my idea of relaxation because I'm very firm here, firm but not stiff, and my body is uh, really free to move. If you look at my knees from the side, you will see that they are slightly bent. They are not, uh, uh, obviously, like this, neither stiff like that. There's something in between, that's sort of a natural position that they acquire and this uh, allows me, allows my body to have this sort of a bouncy uh, feeling, bouncy stance and which is very natural and uh, very comfortable and gives me a lot of relaxation. When I talk about relaxation, let's make this clear, I don't mean staying like this, like let it go, no. The body needs to be uh, relaxed which means that there are no tensions, but also needs to be firm and just needs to follow the, um, the, natural, the natural shape of the body and of the spine. So, as you can see, like this, I am relaxed, but I'm not stiff at all. 
Very important also is that your uh, shoulders are, are released so that you don't stay like this, but you just let them down. A nice exercise in order to achieve this is that of lifting your arms like this and letting them go down just uh, without controlling them, just dropping them and let the weight do the rest. You will realize I used to have the problem of keeping my shoulders high, so I remember and recognize that. You will realize after a couple of times that you do it that uh, you will stop uh, trying to uh, command to uh, control and uh, yeah and to control the shoulder, but you will just let let it go. That's a feeling that you acquire with time. Anyway, so just to uh, resume, be well grounded, firm but not uh, stiff stance, and relaxation in the shoulders. But now it's about time we start playing the bass. So let's take a look. One of the questions that uh, um, every bass player asks himself is uh, um, how high do I have to set the end pin? This is a tricky question because uh, every player is different but especially every bass is different. We, we play an instrument that is not standard sized so that varies uh, greatly. There are though some principles we can follow and may help us. As you see, now the, now the end pin is um, completely in, it's completely retreated. So, um, if I wanted to play uh, with the bass like this, I would realize that uh, yeah, it's really low and... Uh, yeah, let's say the Dragon it today. <laughs> if I try to play with the bow and I want to go to the bridge, and this is something you need often, I need to go down so much with the, uh, with the back and that would uh, make me become a Quasimodo from the Hunchback of Notre Dame probably with less charm and with a worse French so I don't think that's a, um, that's a good way so that's where the end pin comes in help So let's open the end pin. By the way, this is a carbon fiber end pin. It's uh, very nice. It's uh, very light, and I just found it sounds very well on my bass. It wasn't even that expensive, so you may look into it. So I just put the end pin out a little bit. Now I have the opposite problem. For example. Well, as you can see, I can go to the bridge very well, I can even play uh, beyond the bridge easily. But I get the bass to be uh, really high. As you see, I get my, um, my arm and my shoulder, my left shoulders to uh, be really high. And uh, this is not healthy either, because imagine to stay for a couple of hours like this. You don't want to do that. So, this again is uh, very high. So, let's try. Another, another height. Ha. As you can see, this is the good height for me because I have ease of bowing all over the, uh, the bowable string and I can play here in the low positions without lifting my shoulder and I can easily reach the, the wool finger. So, this is the principle. You need to find um, a compromise when you set the, the height of the end pin that allows you to, uh, to reach anywhere you need uh, with the bow easily and also to play comfortably on the fingerboard and, of course, to move, to, to move all over it. But, the moment that we have set uh, our end pin properly, that's the moment we also need to uh, find a good position um, for the bass on our body. I'll show you how I approach the instrument. You can see very well from the side. So, I put my body in the posture that I showed you before. 
I put the base straight in front of me, like that, and I hold it here by the beginning of the neck with my uh, left hand. At this point, I up. I always say we go one towards the other. I mean, I approach the base with my body, and the base comes towards me. So I can make a little step ahead and the base and slant the base like this until I um, reach a point that the base leans against me easily and is balanced. If you see, I balance it here on my hip, on my belly. Let's call things with their own name. <laughs> Well, that actually helps. So, I ju just balance it like this, and I already have a rather good position, because like this, the base is perfectly balanced. I don't need to do, literally don't need to do anything in order to keep it up. I have no tension in my body, and I feel very free, and the base doesn't fall. And in many years, uh, I've never made the base fall, also because now it would be <laughs> pretty desperate if that happened. So, it works. At this point, when I want to put my hands, I just do this, kind of a hug. And as you see, I can reach the base, I can approach the base very easily. Even with the bow. There we are. Of course, if, uh, uh, if I need to move, to play in various areas, I can obviously go a bit ahead, stand or step a little back, that depends also on the music playing. This is, and this is, this is a position that uh, allows my body to, to feel very good. The bass has also, and that's important, as a, um, is, is held by the body by a minimum part. Only this, the, by the, on this uh, side, which is like this area of wood. So that means that my body will not dampen the bass too much. So I will get an optimal sound out of it. And you see, the bass sounds well, it's really resonant as a tuner that uh, shakes, but because I should remove that before I play. But uh, yeah, it works really well. With this position I can play literally for hours and never get tired. Let's take a closer look at what I do with the uh, left arm and left hand when I play. When I'm in the low positions, as you can see, my shoulder is down, my uh, elbow is neither drop down like this nor high like that, but simply follows the line of the the arm of the bones that go from the uh, shoulder to the to the hand. So this is a very natural position. For some people, it's more natural to stay lower. For more, it's more natural to stay upper. What I'd say is, you have to gauge where your uh, um, where your uh, let's say optimal point is. To me, if I stay like this, I feel tension and not feel good. And if I, I lift, I lift, I lift. When I get here, I feel good. If I want to try how I can go, I just start doing this. And at this point, for example, I start to feel uneasy. I start not to feel good anymore. So, like this, I have discovered that this is my most natural position, where my arm works the best. Now, so I stay in the low positions. When I go up, as you can see, I move the elbow and the shoulder follows. So. And so on. As you see, I never uh, raise the shoulder, so I never get to play like this. What I do is I simply go a little bit in front with my back. I do a bit of this motion with the back that is still straight, so I don't do this. Like this, I would just get cramps, and that's terrible. And uh, or do abdominals, but <laughs> that's, this is not the this is not the, the place and the time where you would do that. So I just go a little bit in front, and I allow my arm to slide comfortably. And obviously, 
the opposite happens when I go back. So, to conclude, to resume. Notice that I don't go down with my neck. That's a typical mistake that especially beginner players do to do this. Don't do it because this will lock your, uh, your back muscles and uh, make you extremely stiff everywhere. And it will lead to pain and it will really um, hinder your ability to play. What I do with the left shoulder, of course, happens also on the right shoulder. So, the shoulder is relaxed, is done, released, and this allows me to play very easily and very comfortably, both here, 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 so on all the string. So, let's resume. Firm, grounded and relaxed position, very natural and ergonomical, with the weight of the body that is well unloaded into the ground. Base, well balanced on your body, you hug the base as a, an approach, then if you play a scale, seen so far um, applies to playing standing, which is what they do 90% of the time. Though it may happen that um, you're in a situation where you need to play sitting. Let's imagine if you're playing in an orchestra and um, you're playing opera for many many hours, you will play sitting because you can't stand 5-6 hours like this, you know, or uh, you get an injury, you get a broken leg, I mean anything can happen. So, how do I play seated? First of all, you need a stool, a proper stool, possibly adjustable, so that you can put it on, uh, on the right position for your uh, height. The end pin of the base is obviously uh, differently, most likely is uh, put shorter than, we will, than what we do standing. Then, as you see, my approach is exactly the same. I have the two knees at the level of the hips so that my weight can go smoothly into the ground. My, uh, my back is slightly uh, uh, arched like that with my bottom a little bit more behind and my, and my, my, my back straight but slightly arched here. This allows me to follow the natural shape of the spine and uh, so that Again, the weight from the head and from the upper part of my body can just flow without stopping there. As you see, I take the base exactly in the same way and that's very nice because then I will have the same reference point and I will move in the same way. So, that's it. That's the, so is, in my opinion, the, the reason, and there must be not much difference between uh, the way we play standing and the way we play sitting. I can switch between standing and sitting very easily because of that, and, um, and that's good, because I feel comfortable in either way. This was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, that it was some inspiration for you. And if you liked it, please don't forget to add a thumb up and to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have any comment, any observation, any question, please write it in the section below and I'll be really happy to read it and reply. This said, have a great day my friends and see you in the next video. Ciao!